welcome back to our creative videos. I'm Loretta Hayes from Hayes Sewing Machine Company in Wilmington, Delaware. And today we are going to be working with the puppies pattern of Elizabeth Hartman. Um, we're doing it for our Dog Days of Summer promotion. Um, and so we will talk about that a little bit later. So we're going to start out. This pattern actually has three different puppies. And the puppies' names are Smokey, <laughs> Toby, and Lulu. Oh, <laughs> cute. So we are going to be uh, doing Toby. Okay, and Toby has got the white muzzle and the different color ears. And okay. so, well, yep, do that. perfect. Can yeah. you point to it again? Uh, sure. So Toby is that's that like one. That one. There. Got it. Okay. And really, both all three dogs are um, just variations off, off of a theme, uh, slightly different sizes, that kind of thing. All right, so we are going to start out and. Um, as we've done in the past with Elizabeth Hartman, they are very easy to do, but when looking at it and cutting it <laughs> out, you look at it and go, oh my word, what have I done? And so what you just need to do is you need to label the pieces. Um, we labeled them with little paper tabs this time. I have done sticky notes in the past. Um, if I'm doing, I'm only doing one puppy today, but if I'm doing all of the puppies for the quilt, then what I would do is I would take some sandwich baggies and I would, you know, put A, B, C, and put all the A's in, all the B's in, uh, et cetera. So as you're working with it, much, you just need to be a little bit organized with it. Not difficult piecing, but do need to keep it separated. So we're going to start out with Toby's nose and Toby's nose is, is B. And so we're going to take the B section and we're going to add the white pieces on his muzzle. And so when we're working with white, and this happens to be a white on white print. <clears throat> and if you've worked with white on white prints before, you will know that it is so easy to flip one or two of them and have the wrong side facing up. So as I'm doing this, you'll see me put the white fabric on top of my hand, and that is what they refer to as the skin test, and I don't know why, but it makes it much easier to see that we are doing uh, the right side. So we are gonna put the right side of our white on white print, and we're gonna place that in the lower corner of his little nose. So we're gonna stitch from one side to the other, and this piece here is about an inch and a quarter, and so oftentimes, if I'm doing the smaller pieces, a one inch piece or uh, a one and a quarter inch piece, you'll see me just take off and just sew from one corner to the other. But as we're going along, we're going to see larger blocks, which we're going to draw the line. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to be sewing from one side of the black nose to the other side of the black nose. We're then going to cut our piece. Okay, and then we're going to sew the second piece, so let's make sure that it's facing up. And we're going to come in, and we're going to sew from corner to corner. And this would be one of those few times where I really like having a quarter inch foot that doesn't have a guide on it. We can use a quarter inch guide um, when we start putting the pieces together, but in the sewing of the lines going across, oftentimes a, a quarter inch foot with a guide will drag on the fabric and kind of twist it as you go. So just to make life easier, you could even swap to a regular sewing foot for this part of it and then flop back over to your quarter inch. All right, so now that we've done this, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna trim away the excess corner and I am going to hop over to the ironing board and I'm going to press it and I'm going to press it towards the dark side. Now, one thing that you need to know when you're reading your Elizabeth Hartman pattern, um, Elizabeth Hartman has you press seam allowances open. Uh, I think mainly for bulk purposes. Um, however, I have found with her patterns that just pressing it to the dark traditionally has had no issues at all. 
So we now have the bottom of his nose. So now we need to start adding his muzzle. So we're gonna take the letter P and we are going to add that to the bottom. And if you've not done an Elizabeth Hartman pattern before, she kind of does the in sections. So we're gonna work on this nose section, the snout, um, and then we'll set it aside and we'll move on to something else. And then we will come back and we will put all the units together. Okay, so we now have that there. We're now gonna take and put the top part of the muzzle on. So that's the letter M, and we're gonna place that at the top. And I tell you that skin test is wonderful because I almost put a wrong side facing up. <laughs> so we're gonna come in. And we're going to stitch that on the top. Give that a quick press. Once again, press towards the dark, particularly on this um, section where his nose is, because uh, we don't want that black to shatter through on the white. All right, last things for this muzzle is to take the letter M, N as in Nancy, I'm sorry, and we are going to place that on the side. So we'll come in, and we're just quarter inch semen, place that on the first side, and then we'll take our second one, and we'll place that on the opposite side. and we'll press that into place. Now, at this point, you can see his little muzzle kind of being developed, but right now he's very square and he looks kind of like a Lego animal. <laughs> <laughs> so what we wanna do is we wanna take and round out his um, muzzle. So we're gonna come in and we're gonna place our um, background fabric, which is going to be the yellow, and we're going to place it and we're going to go uh, one on the bottom and one on the top, on the, excuse me, one on the bottom left side and one on the bottom right side. Now, we're getting to blocks that are a little bit larger. So, probably can't eyeball it as accurately as I would like. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in, I'm going to place my rotary ruler, and it's really nice to have a small one rather than you know, our six by 20 to 24. Um, and we're gonna come in and we're gonna draw our lines. Now, one of the things that I have found when I'm doing Elizabeth Hartman designs is I always uh, draw my lines as I need them. So rather than taking a whole pile and trying to figure out which way the lines need to go, we can just build it as we go. So once again, we're going from corner to corner and then corner to corner again. All right, so once we have that done, we're gonna take it, we're gonna do a little trim, and you'll notice I'm trimming with my scissors, okay? This is not, um, we don't have to have a perfect quarter inch, we don't need to grab out the rotary mat and ruler, um, we are just kind of getting rid of the bulk of that triangle. And then we'll press that into place. And now the bottom of his muzzle looks so much cuter. So now what we want to do is we want to round out the top one. Now the top, instead of being a background fabric, is going to be uh, the gray that his face is going to be made of. So letter I is going to come in and we're going to be go ahead and placing those going like this. So we'll come in and we're going to draw our line.
going side to side. And just a kind of a little thing to know, when you're doing Elizabeth Hartman patterns, often, not every single time, but often when you're drawing your diagonal lines, you are drawing it from the side to the top, the side to the top, side to the bottom. So it would be very unusual for you to be drawing your line where it's going to go out the corner coming out from there. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to flip that back. So it's just kind of a nice little double check. Are you drawing that line from one side of the unit to the other side of the unit? Trim that off and press that into place. All right, and his muzzle is complete. So cute. All right, so the next unit that we are going to work on is the unit that is his eyes. So we're going to take his eyes. So we have uh, letter A, which is his physical eyeball and then letter H, which is the little uh, gray section right next to his eye. And we're gonna join that twice. So one there. And one here. Oops. Pause that thought. I'm using today on the black, I'm using uh, a grunge fabric. So grunges are great uh, because you have a solid on one side and you have the grunge on the other. I decided early on that I was going to do just the solid and of course I've just put a grunge together. So let's take that out. If you've not used grunge fabrics in the past, Oh, I love grunge fabrics. It's a two for fabric, right? You get two fabrics for, for the price of one. All right, let's make sure that solid side is down. And let's go ahead and sew that. And that seam was so long to take out. I home. know, it was horrible. I had to grab the seam ripper and everything. <laughs> All right, so we've got our, his little eyes, and we're going to press those towards the black. Right, so now when we lay this back out, now is the time to kind of pay attention to his eyes because we don't want him to have eyes that are going like to the <laughs> left or to the right or cross-eyed or that kind of thing. So we want to make certain that the gray pieces are both facing towards each other. We're now going to take and attach the gray right above his eye. So you can see by joining these two together, we now match this shape up. And that's another interesting thing about Elizabeth Hartman patterns. Because of the way she builds the piecing, um, it'll be super obvious if you're not putting the two pieces together that she intended. Because there is kind of a little bit of an order to it and she gives you this wonderful diagram um, to kind of follow in her patterns. Um, she is, as far as I'm concerned, an awesome pattern writer. Um, once you've done one Elizabeth Hartman pattern, you can do all of them because the technique is done exactly the same way each time. But if you pick up a piece and it doesn't line up, you know, it's like sticking out a quarter of an inch or a half an inch, um, then we need to go back to the diagram and check it out. All right, so now we have his two eyes and now what we wanna do is get that lovely white stripe that's gonna run up his forehead. And so that is gonna be our L piece. And so we're gonna place that in between the two eye units that we've just done. Okay. 
So there is one. And then we'll place that. Once again, make sure the eyes are in the right position. And they are not. I was going to say they aren't. No, <laughs> I'm just like flubbing today. What's the deal? Let me pull this. But hey, you know, catch it on the first one. Pam so nicely hands me a seam ripper. Right, so we try that one one more time. Let's lay out his eyes. Grays are in the center. <laughs> and when I pick it up, I'm going to make certain that I'm sewing along the gray, not along the eye. There you go. Much better, much better, much better. And then we'll sew the second one. And then we're going to press towards the gray because we're pressing towards that darker fabric. Okay. So now we're starting to really see the puppy come together here. Oh, he's cute. Isn't he sweet, Mr. Toby? All right, so we're going to come in and we're going to join this unit to that. And then our last thing for this center unit is to add the background at the top, which is our letter C. So we now have the center of the puppy's face taken care of. And oftentimes on Elizabeth's patterns, she does start with either the muzzle or the eyes. I think she does it because then she gets rid of all of the little fiddly pieces first and then you're working the rest <laughs> of them. So he starts looking really cute at this point. All right, so the next thing that we need to do is we need to put the sides of his face on. So what we're going to do is we're going to take letter K and letter F, so one gray and one background and we have it on both sides. Now, when we go to do this, we want to do mirror images of them. So when I lay this down, the left-hand side, I've got the background at the bottom, and I have the gray on top, and it's pointing to the left. On the right hand side, I've got the gray, the background on the bottom, gray on the top, and it is pointing to, to the, right. the right. At which point, we can now draw our diagonal on the gray fabric. Now, what I often will do, because I can see this corner just fine, but I can't necessarily see the background block over here. So what I'll do is I'll just pull it down just a smidge so that I can see where I want that other end to line up. So I'm not going to sew it there, but I'm just drawing the line. So there's our first line, and then we're going to come in 
and will line up on the other. And what's kind of interesting, I hadn't really thought about it, the clear of the um, insert in the cabinet, it kind of works a little bit like a light box because I can see it on this one. I don't have to shift it nearly as much. Very nice. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to sew along that line. So one's going to be facing one way, one's going to be facing the other. So we'll come in like that. And we're going to trim away our corner just like we were doing when we were doing our squares. And we're going to press towards that gray fabric. Okay, so that's kind of going to be going like that. So you can see how he's getting the oh, roundness sure. of his face. Yep. All right, so while we're doing this unit, we're going to come in and we're going to add the background, which is letter G, to the side piece. And the second one. And then we will press that flat. Oh, that really is making <laughs> his face. <laughs> show up really nice all right so there <laughs> we're starting to really get a cute He's looking puppy. cute all right so the last thing that we need to do is we need to do his sweet little ears and we've done his sweet little ears and polka dots <laughs> so we're going to start at the top um, and we are going to do our d's in our background and we're going to draw, we have two of them in this case for each ear. So once again, from side to side and side to side. So they should be pointing together at the center of his ear. And then let's go ahead and draw the second one. come in and we're going to stitch those lines. And basically, once again, we're creating that rounded effect for his ears. We don't want him to have a blockhead. Clip those apart, flip them around, and let's do our second one. Clip those ends and press it towards the gray. All right, so we now have the top of his ears done. <laughs> I love the spotted. <laughs> so now what we want to do is we want to curve the bottom of his ear. 
So we're going to take the E square and tuck that in the corner. And obviously make sure they're opposite. Correct. Make sure we're mirror imaged. Mirror imaged. So once again, we're going to have one on the left and one on the right. And definitely need to draw the lines on this one. Or his ears could be blown in the breeze. Mm, that's true. That's true. <laughs> Draw the line like that, and then draw the line the opposite way. And with the squares, there's no need to shift because you can see both corners. So I was trying to think back. Was it April time, Pam, that we did the perfect sewing month? I think we did, yes. Okay. April. So in April of this year, which is 2023, if you're watching videos later on in our lives, um, we did a promotion where we were doing a special sale on anything that was cat related. So we had cat patterns, cat fabrics on sale. We had um, cat we brought notebooks. In, yeah, cat notebooks. We brought in cat socks, all Ooh. kinds of fun stuff. So anyway, we were doing that uh, in a bid to um, support our local SPCA. And so our goal was to do a $500 um, contribution to our local SPCA. And everybody said to us, but what about dogs? <laughs> and so we were like, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it's going to be the, the donation isn't going to be just for cats. But we also let people know that we were planning on doing the same kind of um, uh, promotion um, uh, to support our local SPCA for the dog days of August. So that's why this, this video is being done in August. Um, so you can stop by the store and check out our display for the dog days of summer and um, support our local SPCA. All right, so we now have our ear pieces done. So the next thing that you're going to see is you're going to be like, but he's surprised. <laughs> <laughs> so it's okay. This is where I was saying that when you're putting things together and it doesn't look like it's right, it's okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to take it and we're going to line up the bottom of the face on top. He looked really surprised at me. <laughs> he did. He looked surprised. <laughs> and we're going to take the side units and we're going to have them. So once again, left the left right. hand one is facing to the left. The right hand one is facing to the right. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come in and we're going to draw a line across the two units. So once again, because it's a rectangle, I can see the top one really easily, but I want to kind of shift it off just a little bit so I can see where that bottom one, Got so it. that bottom one is lining up on the point there. And so we're going to come in and we'll do the same thing here, but it should be mirror imaged. I don't know. I kind of liked him as a, as a oh, surprise. Yeah, so we might, we might have to reinvent this pattern. <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead and sew these last two diagonal lines. And then we are going to cut away this entire section. Now, what you might want to do is you might want to take a quick look 
to make sure it's exactly what you want. There you go. So before you cut away that you feel confident. Because when I do this part of it, I really, like I'm starting to cut across seams and that kind of thing. So I'm kind of like, oh, you know, is that right? And so once again, we'll kind of check it out. Yeah, that looks good. So we'll go ahead and we'll trim that away. And we're gonna press that flat. All right, so we now have three units. Oh, Isn't that sweet? Is cute? All right, so we're gonna go ahead and do these last seams. So, <laughs> let's line her up. And I find that Elizabeth Hartman does such a good job designing her patterns that very seldom do I find any variation. But if you do, let's say you're an eighth of an inch bigger, because there's a lot of seams in this pattern here. You know, if we were off a smidge, we could affect the, the overall block size. So remember the rule that if you have a little bit larger, that piece is always gonna go to the bottom. So we're always sewing with a big bottom. So I pick it up, I take a look, I line it up there. So actually here, look at that. All right, so we're like about an eighth of an inch off. So we'll go ahead and we'll put that bigger piece on the bottom. And then we'll grab a hold of the edges because somebody's gonna be in charge and it's gonna be us. And by the time we make it down to the other end of the block, those ends are gonna line up exactly. All right, let's give him one final press. Ah, that is <laughs> Toby. And Toby so, is cute. Toby's sweet. Toby needs a little bit of thread trim up and then he's ready to maybe get put in a pillow or maybe in a, in a quilt as well. So I hope you enjoyed this, um, this block. It's a fun one to do. One of the things I love about Elizabeth Hartman's patterns is they keep your interest all the way through. So I love doing nine patches, but by the time I'm done 18 nine patches for, uh, you know, 25 block quilt, I'm kind of bored, okay? But never ever do you feel that way with these. Always <laughs> keep you interested. So we'll see you next time. Um, enjoy sewing.